All right, welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and talk about post requests. And we're going to compare and contrast the difference between a get request as well as a post request and when you should use a get versus post. So when it comes to get requests, we know that get requests allow you to get some kind of resource. Okay, so let's say, for example, if you have a set of books that you want to send to the user, typically you would use a get request for that because you're receiving or you're retrieving a collection of information. Okay, it could also just be an individual uh, piece of information. Let's say if you want to get one single book record from the API, okay, you would also use a get request. Okay, remember, get requests are for getting or retrieving a resource that lives on the server. But what about creating a resource? Okay, well, what if we wanted to actually add items to our grocery list? Let's say, for example, this array that we are sending back to the user is a simple grocery list that the user is building up. Okay, how do we actually populate data inside this grocery list or inside this array? What would we do to create a new record on our server-side application? Well, this is where post requests come in. So whenever you need to do anything that involves creating a new resource, and keep in mind, creating a new resource, okay, you will use a post request. So let's say, for example, if you want to create a brand new user account, when you are registering or signing up, right? You would use a post request to send the data from the client side to the server side. So what kind of data would you send? Well, let's say, for example, if the user is trying to create a brand new account for a new social media application that you built, well, the sign up page might require the first and last name, the user's username, the email address, and then the password, as well as confirming the password. So you would send all of those fields from the client side to the server side, which is our express application. Okay, so when you send that request, well, first, uh, first of all, you would obviously still be using the HTTP protocol, but the request method is going to be different. Instead of using a get request, because remember, getting get requests are for receiving, retrieving information from a server. When it comes to creating a new record, you would use a post request instead. So on the client side, you would actually use a post request and send all that data in a payload or also known as a request body. Okay. And that request body can be referenced with the request object from the request object. And I'll show you how we can do that. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't, let's go ahead and look at an example and maybe that will make a lot more sense and we'll go over it once again. So uh, we're going to go underneath our app.get. And we're just going to set up a simple app dot post. Okay, so we just simply reference app and then we call the post method like that. And similar to the get method, it takes in one parameter in the beginning, which is the path. And then it takes in the second parameter, which is going to be the, uh, the handler for this request. Okay, that's what it's actually called a uh, request handler. So let's go ahead and specify a path. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and first get rid of this array. And I'm going to actually move that. Uh, I'm going to move it up here. And I'll assign it to a variable called grocery list. Okay. And we'll just take this grocery list and we'll send this back. So we're doing the same thing, except we're just referencing the array. And the reason why I'm doing this is because what I'm going to do with this post request is we're going to take in a grocery, so the item as well as the quantity, and then we're going to just add it to this array. Okay, so for the path, we can actually just reuse the same path as the get request, and it will make the distinction when we specify what request method we're using. So for example, I can have a get request and a post request with the same path, Okay, whoops, groceries. The only difference is that when we actually make an HTTP call, we'll specify which method we're using and it will know, the server will know which, which, uh, which request handler to actually invoke. Okay, so Express, is actually, Express actually handles that for us. 
So we'll go ahead and pass in the callback function, also known as the request handler function. Okay, so we have app.post slash groceries and then request and response. So I'm going to go ahead and first console log request dot body. So request dot body is a property that has all of the properties that are inside the request body. Now we actually will need to do something in just a second in order to get this request body to work, but I'm going to show you what happens if we don't do that specific thing. I'm going to mention it when we actually make this post request, but for now, Let's go ahead and just send a response back. And typically when it comes to post requests, you should send back a status code of 201, 201. And that basically indicates that a creation of a record has been made successfully. So we just send back a 201. Okay, now we're not doing anything yet. All we're doing is just cons logging the request body. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go inside Postman. Now, if you don't want to use Postman, I personally like it, but if you don't want to use it, you can actually install the Thunder client. And so this is actually a pretty popular uh, extension on VS Code, and you can actually use this to make requests. Uh, I personally like using Postman, so I'm going to stick with Postman. But like I said, you can also just use the terminal if you want to, if you want to use the, uh, the PowerShell commands to make HTTP calls, or if you want to use curl. You can do it as well, knock yourself out. But like I said, just download Postman or Dunder Client. It's very easy. I'd recommend Postman. It's very easy to use. Okay. So we're going to go into Postman. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the method as post. And then we're going to go ahead and enter the URL. So HTTP localhost, whoops, localhost port 3001 groceries. So right now, if I click on send, it's going to give us back a 201 created because we are sending back a 201 status code. Okay, but we obviously did not send a request body. Okay, so if I go ahead and look at the logs right now, it's just gonna say undefined because we didn't send anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually send some data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead into the body tab in Postman. So right over here, we're gonna click on body and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and select raw and I'll select JSON. And let's go ahead and send the item name. So let's just go ahead and do, let's see, apples. So item will be, whoops, apples. And then we'll do quantity eight. Didn't mean to do that. Let's click send and you can see that it still says undefined. So what exactly is the problem here? So the problem here is that we're trying to send a request body to the server, but the server actually does not know how to actually parse the data that's being sent. So what we need to do is we need to actually enable a middleware function in order for it to actually parse the request body properly. Okay. So let's say, for example, right now, if I actually try to send text, what happens is it's still undefined. If I try to send JSON, it does the same thing. Even if I try to send a form URL encoded. Now, in case if you don't know what form URL encoded is, this is actually um, the standard way that forms actually serialize data when it comes to making post requests. So you often will need to make sure that this, um, like this, uh, your server is able to interpret URL encoded data. But if I try to send uh, let's do item, oops, let's do oranges, quantity two. Even if I try to do that, it's still going to go ahead and say undefined. So what we need to do is we need to go up top over here. So I'll go ahead and do this on line six. So right after you create your app instance and before you listen to the server, we'll go ahead and reference the app and we're going to call use. And this actually allows you to register middlewares. When you call app.use, what happens is you can actually pass in a function, okay? And what that will allow you to do is register a middleware. And what exactly is middleware? Well, we're going to dive more deeper into middleware in the next couple of episodes. But for now, I'll give you a simple explanation. Middleware is pretty much just a function. It's nothing more than just a function that is to be invoked literally in the middle of the two main 
functionalities. Okay, so what exactly are the two main functionalities or the main functionalities? Well, let's say, for example, if we're trying to receive or not receive, retrieve the grocery list, okay, in between that call, in between when the user makes the request, right? So they make the request, but we haven't sent the response back. In between, we apply the middleware function and that middleware function can perform some kind of task. The most common task a middleware can typically perform is logging, for example, okay? So we can make it so that whenever we visit a route, okay, in the middle, before we actually handle the request or the response, we can apply middleware, we can log the request, the path, the URL, everything, and then we can go ahead and invoke the callback function. Like I said, it'll make a lot more sense in the next couple episodes, but for now, don't worry so much about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to call app.use, and then we're going to go ahead and reference express, and we're going to go ahead and call the JSON method like this. Okay, so this will allow us to actually send JSON to our server. So if I send JSON right now, if I look in the console, you're going to see that we actually get the JSON object, item, apples, quantity 8. If we want to send URL encoded data, you can see that right now, because we have applied the middleware, we can actually, instead of getting undefined, we actually get an empty object, okay? But in order for URL encoded data to be interpreted by our server or be properly parsed, we need to enable that middleware. And what we do is we go ahead and reference app.use express dot and then we can reference url encoded okay so now if i try to send url encoded data you're going to see that item oranges quantity two okay hopefully that makes sense and if you wanted to send text of course you would make sure you enable text on the server okay but the most common one are json and url encoded you will rarely ever have to touch uh text or raw or binary or form data well form data is is uh, sometimes but you most likely you'll be working with url encoded form url encoded or just json especially if you use axios or fetch for example so hopefully that makes sense okay cool so now that we know how to actually uh get the request body now what we're going to do is we're going to take the request body and we're just going to simply do this so we'll pretend like we are creating a new record by just simply doing grocery list dot push and it will push request dot body okay and it will just send back a 201 so when we go ahead and fetch the groceries endpoint with a get request it's going to give us the updated grocery list so let's go ahead and test it out so we just restarted our server okay so i'm going to go ahead and first let's go ahead and make a get request so we can see what the response is so the resource gives us back a grocery list of three items in the grocery list now let's go ahead and make a post request and let's do so using uh let's let's go back to json instead let's do that so i'm going to go ahead and click send created now let's go ahead and make a get request now and we can see the apples is now added to this array okay so if i want to send another post request let's do Let's do, um, let's see, bananas, and let's do 20 bananas. Okay, perfect. Let's make a get request. And there you go. You see, we have that inside our array. We're, we can pretend like this array is like a database, for example, and it has all of these records in the database. Okay, but hopefully that makes sense on what exactly post requests are and what the difference between post and get requests are. Remember, get requests is just for retrieving a resource. Post requests are for creating a new resource. If you can understand the differences between get and post, your life will be very, very simple when it comes to building APIs. So hopefully this tutorial made sense. Hopefully you all learned something new. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a simple middleware. I'm going to explain what exactly what middleware is in depth and we're going to go ahead and create some middleware so i'll see you all in my next episode peace out